Well, I fell off the wagon, but I'll start again on Monday. I promise, and this time, it's for good. I'm not gonna fall off the wagon again. I was just kidding. I didn't really fall off the wagon this time. The whole point of this video is that I finally found a sustainable diet. I don't know about you, but I've been to that place many, many, many times over the past 50 years. A little over 50 years ago, in 1973, I bought a book called The New Atkins Diet Revolution. And I bought this book because I'd always had a weight problem. And about three years after I got out of the service, I gained a lot of the weight back that I had lost while I was in the Army. That book made more sense to me than any other diet book I've ever read because it talked about biochemistry, it talked about carbohydrates, and it was the basically the first time anybody would ever heard that stuff. So I went on the Atkins diet. And if you think the carnivore or the keto diet gets a lot of heat today, you can imagine back in the early 70s how Dr. Atkins and his ridiculous way of eating was vilified. Well, I lost weight on that diet and uh, kept it off for a little while. But as usually happens, I fell off the wagon, said those famous words, well, I'll start again on Monday. And this time I promise I won't fall off the wagon again. Well, that cycle repeated itself over the next few years. And then another diet came out. It was the Mediterranean diet, followed by the paleo diet, etc. And over the course of those 50 years, I tried to fine tune the diet, which were all basically uh, low carb diets. And one I especially thought had a lot of merit was the zone diet, written by Dr. Barry Sears. And he made a lot of good points, but same thing. Now, over the years, I discovered that the reason I kept falling off the wagon wasn't that I didn't have any willpower. It was an addiction. Nobody talked about food addiction back in those days, but it turns out that, that this addiction was the uh, and probably still is the reason why 99% of people who lose weight eventually gain it back. I discovered personally that it was probably stronger than an addiction to alcohol, cigarettes, even hard drugs like cocaine, crack, or, or heroin. But it's not uh, thought of as an addiction. Wrong week, quit sniffing blue. I'm going to assume that you're watching this video because I'm not alone in that uh, in that pattern of behavior that uh, that I've lived for the past 50 years of never ever being able to find that sustainable lifestyle that I think I finally found now on the carnivore diet. Turns out that it's elegantly simple after all. We've been programmed by evolutionary changes to our behavior that favors survival over everything else. Darwin was right. When survival's on the line, risks must be taken. That's no time for overthinking. Activate the fight or flight response. Damn the torpedoes. <laughs> See you on the other side. 
This ignore the consequences behavior was necessary during hunting, fighting, fleeing, or other events that ensured survival. The default metabolic state for humans is primarily using fat for energy, not sugar. Carbs were never healthy, but served as a survival food in the absence of real food like fatty meat. Yeah, we need glucose, but we make as much of it's necessary in the liver on demand through gluconeogenesis. As we evolved, there were little to no carbs around, so it benefited survival to favor mechanisms that turned off satiety when we needed carbs in the absence of fatty meat. In the rare event carbs were available, gorge. Keep eating until the carbs are gone or you simply can't move. Yes, damage was done to our machinery optimized to run on fat, but this carb loading was done so infrequently that damage could be repaired by autophagy before it was too late, during periods of hibernation or when real food eventually became available. Fast forward to today. It's become too late. Carbs are the predominant food source. Food from carbs is cheaper to produce, easier to package and make shelf stable, engineered to taste wonderful with no regard for the health consequences. After all, the damage won't be evident for years and we can just keep inventing so-called treatments and drugs to fix it. Big food, big pharma and big agriculture grew to dominate our economy and there's no money to be made if everyone ate cows and eggs and didn't get sick. The rest is history. When we got so metabolically sick and insulin resistance and overproduction caused by reliance on sugar as our primary fuel cause a starvation response, these ancient survival mechanisms kick in and the cravings take control. We might be able to consciously control this for a while but our brain is interpreting this as starving to death and we eventually have to eat. Sugar is the quickest and most available source of energy found virtually everywhere today. Food for thought, meat. Food for binging, sugar and carbs. And this my friends is why you will start your diet again on Monday. Well, I've just finished editing the footage that I shot on the beach and put together the storyline, but uh, I felt that the video needed a conclusion to make clear the point that I'm trying to get across. I talked about addiction, talked about carbohydrates, I talked about evolution. I talked about a lot of things. I want to try to tie it all together in, in a short uh, period of time here. There was a reason throughout my life that uh, I never stuck to a diet and most of them were low carb and I did lose weight on them and they were very similar to keto. I also didn't succeed long term on keto as well and it wasn't until I went zero carbs and that meant no plants because all plants are carbohydrates. The problem I had with keto, and it may be the problem that a lot of people are having, is that limiting your carbs still allows your body to have some. And when your body has some, it invariably wants more. And then you add to the mix all of these garbage, junk, keto-labeled, versions of food that we all crave. The cakes, the pies, the snacks, the drinks, everything, keto this, keto that. And that sabotages the diet. Now this really only applies if you're a carbohydrate addict. So if you're one of these people that can eat one cookie and walk away and not want another one, uh, I envy you. But most of us are not. Most of us a little bit of carbs triggers the, triggers the desire for more carbs. And that's why I advocate for a zero carb diet. And if you do that, that leaves only meat. So I think what's more important here 
and the meat is healthy. The meat has got is full of nutrients. The meat is is without a doubt the best food we can be eating. But I think the most important point that falls away in most discussions is it's the lack of carbs in this diet that actually makes it doable and sustainable. So see for yourself. If you like this video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel. They tell me I'm supposed to advocate for myself here. I'm old. I'm never going to make a billion dollars on YouTube, but I do want the word to get out. So if you think I've said something or have said something important, spread it around, share the videos, and I will see you in the next one. Take the rest of the day off. Eat meat.